Um, my name is Liang Guk. Uh, English name is Rick. Um, I am from the uh, company Oak Bioinformatics, and I'm going to introduce uh, Open Corvette and Oak Far um, here. So your DNA and um, DNA sequencer and you uh, sequence your DNA and then you get the file of your variants. And then uh, you we will use some software to get to the meaning of our DNA sequences. So then this software, so OCFAR and Open Corvette is uh, one of those uh, software uh, programs to uh, get some meanings uh, to help uh, interpreting your variants to know what your DNA sequences mean. And the, um, the history of Open Corvette and OFAR uh, started in uh, 2012. So I was the main developer of uh, Corvette uh, web server. It was a Johns Hopkins project. And that time it was just a web server uh, with about 15 annotation sources, such as CleanVar and Cosmic. And it was uh, for cancer variants only. So it analyzed um, cancer variants and uh, provided annotations. Then 2018, uh, the project Open Curve started uh, by the same lab. And I was the lead architect of the project. Actually, I proposed uh, making a general and also a locally available um, Python package to um, annotate the genomic uh, variants. And that resulted in uh, Open Corvette and as a Python package. So you can locally install and use uh, your laptop or desktop to analyze um, your own genome or other people's. And also the web server is uh, still available, run.opencurvet.org, which is used in this workshop. Then um, this year, I launched uh, OCFAR. It's um, further develop developed the version of OpenCurvet and it's backward compatible with OpenCurvet. And still it's a Python package. And this is the GitHub. And there's no public server yet for OCFAR. So if you want to just uh, conveniently go to a web server and upload your genome and get the annotation data, then um, run.opencurvet.org is the uh, place to go. Now, what does it do? So I will just uh, use OCFAR to, uh, for this presentation. So the genomics interest in me and other uh, the sources that uh, Anton described will provide um, these files, basically, if we say format files or 23 and me files, et cetera. Then um, we will run uh, Open Corvette or OCFAR to get annotation. So what does it mean, annotation? I will explain in the next slides. Then we will have a collection of annotated variants. So then uh, it's stored as a database. So that's the part of annotation. It basically means we add a bunch of additional information to each variant you obtained uh, through these uh, companies' sequencing services. Then the next step that we need is uh, interpretation and getting the meaning out of those annotated variants. And to help, us um, know the meanings of our variants. Oakfar uh, will generate an open Corvette will generate the reports and there are web apps and it's connected to actually it's Oakfar, uh, Python and R um, scripts. So these help um, getting the meaning out of these annotated variants. So for example, this is one we say file, uh, the portion of it, 
And then this is what we get when we uh, get the sequencing data from um, a company like a nebular genomics. Then we, we have chromosome in position and then the alleles and that's it. And then some statistics and some annotation. It's a very difficult to know what it means. So we run a program like OPFAR to get the annotated variants. And then uh, this is uh, one example of web uh, browser based the result viewer of OPFAR uh, with some graphs and statistics and other. So it just helps um, us uh, knowing the meaning of uh, these annotated results. So what is annotation? There are a lot of uh, databases out there like CleanVar, Cosmic, uh, CAD, Revel. They have, they, they have the, their own database uh, that adds the meanings to these uh, variants, but they uh, handle different aspects of each variant. For example, there is a allele frequency database like NOMAD or 1000 genome, which means um, how frequent your variant is. And ClinVar will tell you if your variant was found in any pathological um, actual clinical cases or not. So these different uh, annotation databases will uh, tackle your variant from different angles. So the idea of um, OPAR and other tools also is to combine all these different sources into one um, table, uh, table format so that we can see all the different aspects of each variant. So variants are in the different roles. So they are annotated variants. And in uh, the OPAR is a Python package and it's a modular, um, the architecture is modular. That means each annotation source can be packaged into one Python module, which can be imported by OPAR. So it's very easy to make your own custom module, which is uh, done by this uh, longevity group also. So what you need is just a data source and a Python script that will uh, use this data source to produce uh, that annotation output for each variant. And the OPFAR will handle combining all these uh, different annotations into one um, database. So annotation variants and OPFAR and annotated variants using these different data uh, annotation sources is Python modules. Then um, usually we need filtering because we have millions of variants for each person and we need some uh, filters to um, bring those number, uh, that number of uh, variants down to some manageable number. And then uh, using those filtered variants, then we um, generate reports, apps, and further uh, analysis to get to the meaning of our variants. So for example, uh, this, let's say this is a, a one variant you got from the sequencing company and using the clean bar and only frequency module, um, the, the oak bar annotates that clean from the clean bar, this variant is pathogenic from some clinical study and only frequency was of 0, 0.000. That means it was not observed in one case at least uh, out of um, 1,000 people. So it's um, very rare. So that means this is a very uh, rare and pathogenic variant. So um, of course you will have a lot more variants than just one. So we need, uh, when we use filter, give me only rare and pathogenic variants. Then the second one will be filtered out because the, uh, the clinical implication of that variant was uncertain. It was now observed uh, 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 definitely as pathogenic. So you will have just a first uh, variant only. So that's uh, how we get to some meaningful uh, collection of variants using the filter that we set. And then uh, we'll get, I'll get to the meaning part uh, shortly.
Now, recently, uh, well, I think it was the last week, uh, this company called Ultima Genomics, they announced that they are tar targeting a $100 genome, uh, which means you can sequence, you'll be able to sequence your genome with um, at the cost of $100. So it's quite big news because currently the, uh, Anton showed the slide showing the price of $300 or $500, etc. So it used to be a lot uh, more expensive, but still it's not that cheap. But with $100, it's, um, I think it's really affordable than almost, uh, it, it, it's um, genomic uh, sequences available to the mass. Then it's, um, democratization of um, genomic uh, sequences to the mass. Then what uh, OPFAR is aiming is the democratization of genomic analysis. So we will have variants like every, let's say everybody can have their, um, his or her genome sequence. Then ideally, I think we should be able to analyze our own genome with our laptop and uh, people have different uh, skill sets and different uh, preferred ways of uh, analyzing the data. So um, some graphical user interface, uh, interface based approach or some report, or some people are just familiar with Python or R. So with OCFAR, you can uh, connect to these different modalities to um, go down that on the, um, the, the road of finding meanings of uh, your own variants. So for example, since it's uh, Python based, you can um, use uh, Python Jupyter Notebook or just Python script to connect to OFAR um, annotation, uh, annotated variant um, database. So you can query your annotated uh, variants using the Python. Um, also, there is an R binding to OCFAR. It's called the ROCFAR. So you can um, import or just uh, run the OCFAR analysis and almost every, anything OCFAR can do, you can do inside R also using this uh, R binding library. And of course, uh, there is a web browser based um, result viewer. So you can filter and uh, just examine the data. Also, it's possible to make a custom web app. So the concept of web app is the uh, OFAR is the platform that, po in, that um, powers the web-based applications that uh, access um, the annotated data uh, variants. So this is a one example. Um, it was this web app was developed for um, molecular tumor board group at Johns Hopkins uh, University. So it was their internal uh, web app. And you can see it has uh, some nice formatting and custom uh, stuff here, but it was powered by uh, OpenCravet. Uh, it was made before uh, OFAR. And finally, because it's a Python based, um, it can send the annotated variants as a pandas data frame uh, using uh, also the filters if you want. Then uh, because it's a pandas data frame, you can uh, feed that to AI or ML libraries, uh, Python based libraries. So this uh, OCFAR can be the gateway to use your annotated variants for um, AI or ML-based uh, studies. So the OFAR, uh, we aim that to be a genomic analysis platform for the mass. So OFAR.com uh, will lead to the GitHub uh, repo and you can just uh, install with um, uh, pip, PyPy. And if you have any questions after, um, this workshop or any time, then just please uh, send me an email. Okay, so that's all for me. 
Uh, okay, thank you very much for such a clear explanation. I'm sure everyone will be just exciting now to analyze something personally using uh, open cravat or, or quarn. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. So we will back to use questions, I hope, after closer to the end of our seminar.